Alright, so today we're going to be looking at a burn build. Uh, this build is going to be primarily useful for bosses, as it's doing a lot of damage over time, uh, burn effect kind of damage. So as you can see, you get those little blue numbers ticking consistently. That'll be your burn numbers. So kind of take a look at what we're working with here. Uh, right away, our first main weapon is going to be the Pyroclasm Starter. So what this does is a 27% chance to trigger burn on hit, a 20% chance to generate a deviant particle on hit, which can be used to enter the charge state. Um, so though that's when you're when you're shooting here, right? Shooting the shotgun, you see these little glowy orbs that pop out. You pick those up, and that puts you in the charge state. So what that does uh, is while under charge. Uh, upon reloading, replace all ammunition as Dragon's Breath ammo until the next reload. Dragon's Breath deals blaze elemental weapon damage equal to 85% attack uh, with your burn damage bonus applying on top of that, right? Uh, upon reloading, expend all charge to increase blaze elemental damage by 10% until next reload. Each charge stack expended further increases this by an additional 10% up to 4 stacks. So this gun is ridiculous for stacking your burn build effects. All right, so let's look at the specialization that we're using for this gun. Uh, we'll be using rapid shot style. So what this does is it gives you a 20% buff to fire rate, a 50% buff to draw speed, but it lowers your attack by 10. But with a burn build, your main priority is going to be applying as many stacks of burn as possible. So the increased fire rate uh, is very, very helpful. Um, so basically what you're going to do, shoot into your enemy obviously, right, you're going to apply some burn, you're going to wait for one of those orbs to show up, and you're going to be close enough anyway, because you're using a shotgun, that the orbs are most of the time just going to fly immediately into you. Um, you're going to be entering your charge state, and you're going to be doing Dragon's Breath damage upon a reload, right? And then for each extra charge that you have after, um, you're going to be getting even more elemental damage, which as you're, as you're doing these dragon's breath shots as well right you're generating more of these particles and more and more of your charge state so it's just kind of like a consistent circle of just buffing rebuffing 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 with those charge states um, as far as gear goes what we're going to be working on is we're going to be having three pieces of heavy duty style um, so what this does is the first one is just an hp bonus which is whatever the second buff is an elemental damage of eight percent and then your third one is going to be after killing an enemy increases movement speed by 20 percent for two seconds and elemental damage by 40 percent right so even without this right even in just a normal boss fight without even having this effect you're going to be doing really good damage if you are able to kill and add in a boss fight your damage is going to go up by an extra 40 percent of your elemental damage so base without even having that because like numbers wise here the numbers look pretty pretty decent that's that's okay right you go into your charge state you reload you got dragon's breath you're doing a lot more think about that after killing it you're getting a 40 percent additional buff onto your elemental damage right so it gets even higher um, so that's why this, this build is still pretty decent for silos too. Uh, personally, like I run ice when I'm in silos just because I like the feel of it. I like the kind of AOE effects of it. Um, but burn is still going to do good in silos, but it's going to do optimal damage in a boss fight. Um, the next piece of armor, you're going to be using your barbecue gloves. So what this does is burn damage frequency increases with the number of stacks up to 100%. So basically this just means that the more burn stacks you're accumulating, the quicker those ticks are going to happen. Um, so it's just going to, again, continue making those ticks even even more intense each time you're applying one of those burn ticks. So the higher, more these stacks I get up at the same time, you see they start kind of ticking, those blue numbers start ticking a little faster, right? Um, so the more burn you can apply at once, the quicker these ticks are going to go, and you're going to be doing a lot more dot damage. Next two pieces are more of like a dealer's choice kind of thing, right? Um, so currently I'm wearing one piece of bass steel. I use this in a lot of sets just because it's a one piece bonus where if you just keep your HP above 70%, you're doing an additional 10% weapon damage, right? Which is just overall good, right? And most of the time you're going to try to stay above that anyway because you're going to want to be healed decently well. Because uh, especially when you get to hard mode and pro mode, 
those things start to take you down pretty quickly. So you don't want to be gambling with your health there. Um, the other piece that I am wearing right now is Renegade pants, and I'm going to be completely honest, I'm wearing it. <laughs> so um, I'm wearing these pants because I like the look of them better than the Bastille pants. Um, so ideally for this, right, you would wear two pieces of Bastille because the second one gives you a reload speed bonus of 20%. Um, the Renegade Pants give you a 15% reload speed bonus on your one. Uh, I just like the look of them better. It's a 5% difference. And this one is also a dealer's choice piece. I just think I like the reload speed. Just swap it out with whatever you want to use, right? Um, I know some people would rather use, uh, instead of the Bastille and the, the Renegade or two pieces of Bastille, for example, um, there's another set that you can also just get a plus 8% elemental buff. I would rather have just the consistent 10% weapon damage. Um, but again, to each their own. Uh, and then as far as like other side weapons, you're mainly going to be using the shotgun. Uh, I've also thrown on just the ice rifle, just because there's a certain silo where you need ice damage. So this is useful for that. Um, and then in your melee slot, just use whatever melee weapon you want, really. Um, I'm just using this because I got the new cosmetic from the Halloween thing. Um, but otherwise, like if you wanted a useful one, you would equip a stun baton because there's a silo that specifically needs you to be able to do power surge damage. So if you want this to be able to be ran in everything, I would run those three as your weapons. Um, otherwise, again, dealer's choice. Now, looking at the mods for all of your pieces of armor, right? We're going to start with our weapon. Uh, so our weapon mod is going to be Burning Wrath. So what this does is triggering burn has a 25% chance to grant a plus one burn stack. So this is just a 25% chance every time you hit a burn stack to get an additional burn stack for free, right? Um, all of these mods as well, by the way, for your syntax, your little subtext right there. So the burning wrath um, arrow talents, you're going to want either talents or burn if burn is an option. I also have the entirety of this build linked down below. Um, so if you want to look at it while you're going through this with me, feel free, or just look at the build if you don't want to listen to me explain the whole thing, right? Um, so you're going to want either talents or burn if burn is an option. So that's our first one. All right, so for the head, the mod we're going to be using is Elemental Havoc, specifically with the talents uh, subtext. So what this does is your elemental damage is up by 10%, and when your HP is above 90%, you get an extra 10% on top of that. Uh, so there's two ways you can really play this. You can play it with the uh, Elemental Havoc of having the damage plus 10% and then the extra 10% if you can keep your health above. Um, if you don't think you're going to be able to keep your health up that consistently, one substitute is to put in Deviation Expert, which gives you status damage plus 20% with no condition of having a health uh, a health at a certain threshold. But you will lose 25% of range. It isn't that important being on a shotgun, uh, but it is still there. But the damage is very different. Like, there's there's a very big difference in hitting with Elemental Havoc and hitting with Deviation Expert. Um, mask, you're going to want Blaze Amplifier. So what this does is every stack of burn grants plus 3% PSI intensity damage. So again, just upping the damage of your burn. Uh, again, for this one, I have specifically the burn little subtext part of there. Uh, you want to be looking for burn or talents. For the chest, you're going to use Flame Resonance because this gives you a status damage bus buff of plus 12. For your legs, you'll be using Abnormal Increase. Um, so what this does is when the mag is empty, status damage plus 10% for 12 seconds, and the effect can stack three times. So basically, you're going to want to make sure you are full dumping your mag every time, right? You don't want to reload at one, two, three bullets left. You want to full dump your mag every time so that you're getting this plus 10% damage every time you redo a mag. For the barbecue gloves, your hand slot, you're going to be using uh, Elemental Overload. So this increases your element damage by 18%. For your shoes, you're going to be using Slow and Steady. Uh, this is going to be your melee weapon and status damage plus 10%. When your HP is above 90%, grants an additional 10% damage. Now, there's really two that you can kind of do here. Um, I prefer to do slow and steady because, again, I'm going to be pretty aware of consistently healing, right? Uh, the other option is going to be doing something like covered advance, which is taking no damage within 4 seconds, grants you 20% melee weapon and status damage for 30 seconds. I think for this, uh, slow and steady is going to be better. Because as close as you are with the shotgun, I think you are 
more likely to be able to keep your health up than you are to not take chip damage every four seconds. Um, so I prefer slow and steady, but you could slot that out with a covered advance. And that would be our mods. Uh, next thing we're going to look at is the Deviant. So I am using the Pyrodino. Pyrodino is essentially a must on, on a burn build. It, um, basically what it does, I'll just go look at it real quick. So what Pyrodino does, um, autonomously attacks enemy targets, increases target blaze damage received by 34.3%. Uh, when attacking targets affected by burn, cause explosion one time. So not only is it increasing the amount of blaze damage that they're going to take, it's also making explosions happen every time the target is affected by a burn. So this period with this gun and the amount of times you're going to be causing that effect is kind of insane. So we'll kind of go look at the difference right now, right? So if we're just shooting this target dummy, we'll be doing lower damage right away because we haven't gotten to our charge state yet. Um, we will reload, enter our charge state, Dragon's Breath damage, start getting more of our charge state, right? The numbers start to tick up higher and higher the more we go. Um, obviously, we're full dumping our mag, so we're getting that plus 10% status buff each time we're doing this as well. Um, and those effects are stacking up to three times. And we're getting around to, you know, 17 AK damage. Normally, on the target dummy at least, I see this kind of tend to top out around 20k-ish. Um... And that's without any... Like, there it is right there with the 20k, right? So, we're getting up to our 20k numbers, right? Pretty consistently. Just between our charge states um, and our status buffs that we have going on. If we come over here, uh, if I select Pyrodino, right? And have it start doing its little attacks here. Um, the numbers are going to start to tick a lot higher very, very quickly. So now you're kind of starting to hear the explosions as well. Already we're getting up to 23k, 24k. Um, and it's just going to keep increasing. Because we're going to keep causing explosions and we're going to be doing more and more blaze damage. Now we're in 30k. Um, at max, when I was testing this, I saw this topping out around 50, 55k. Um, just because you're consistently stacking these buffs over and over and over again, right? Um, especially if you're getting the, the max amount of charge stacks along with the max amount of your reload um, from full dumping the mags. So there it is up to the 40k. Uh, and it just keeps stacking. It keeps getting higher. 42. So Pyrodino is an absolute must for a burn build. Um, if you don't know where to farm that out, Pyrodino is farmed over at Securement Silo Fee. Um, it is at the hidden boss of Securement Silo Fee. Um, has a chance to spawn there, but it is a it is a must for burn build. We're also going to take a look at our cradle. Uh, this is currently the cradle. We're not in Wave of Winter yet for this one, uh, although Wave of Winter is out. My server is not there yet, so this will be a older cradle. So you're going to be using handgun enhancement, which gives you 20% damage when holding pistols or shotguns. You will be using Anti-Void Shotgun to deal 100% damage to Super Anomaly Void. Uh, you'll have Deviation Master, so when a deviation is present, damage against the Great Ones, so bosses, and Elites plus 25%. So whenever you have your Pyrodino out, you're going to be doing an extra 25% damage. Uh, tactical Combo will give you Weapon Damage plus 25% for 4 seconds after switching weapons or reloading. So this will be giving an even greater buff when we're reloading from our charge state. Uh, status enhancement, after hitting a weak spot, status damage plus 25% for 3 seconds, so this will just be increasing your burn if you're able to hit a weak point. Uh, advantage barrier, hitting weak spots or reloading, grants a shield equal to 30% of max HP. All shield is active, weapon damage reduction plus 15%, cooldown 30 seconds. So, this one isn't really required for the build, this is just an extra filler because there's not going to be all damage ones to fill the cradle. This next one is side-by-side, -side, so when fighting my team, armor durability loss speed, minus 25%. I do that just because I normally play with a bunch of people, and it's nice to not have to repair my armor every two seconds. Uh, and then finally, sustained suppression, which defeating an enemy with continuous damage, such as burn or frost vortex, increases continuous damage by 20% for 10 seconds, and it's stackable up to three times. So that will be your cradle. Otherwise, 
that's pretty much all I have. If you have any questions on the build um, or any builds that you want me to work on in the future, kind of look into, let me know. Um, but otherwise, I appreciate you watching and I hope this helps out.